the middle ear cavity or the tympanic cavity is a cubical chamber present within the petrous part of temporal bone so it is present within the petrous part of temporal bone out of the cubical chamber there will be six walls that is the roof the floor the anterior wall posterior wall medial and lateral wall out of all the walls all the walls are made up of bone which is a compact bone except this lateral wall which is made up of a membrane called tympanic membrane so except the lateral wall all the other walls are made up of bony or a compact bone lateral wall is made up of a connective tissue membrane called as tympanic membrane which consists of three layers the lateral wall is made up of three layers outer cuticular layer is made up of skin the middle fibrous layer which is made up of connective tissue and the inner mucus layer which is made up of mucus membrane so the tympanic membrane is just a connective tissue membrane but outside it's made up of skin and that is called cuticular layer middle it's made up of connective tissue and that is called membranous layer and inner it is made up of mucus membrane lined by simple columnar epithelium with goblet cell called as inner mucus layer so this is about the lateral wall coming to the medial wall the medial wall of the tympanic cavity is related to it is related to one structure called as the promontory so what is the promontory the cochlea will bulge like this into the medial wall projecting into the medial wall of the middle ear the outer surface of the snail shell of the inner ear called the cochlea will project like this and that is called as the promontory the bulging part next the other things which are there on the medial wall there will be a window within this just behind this cochlea within the vestibule there will be a window you can see that here actually oval in shape so we call it as oval window one more window will be there which is made up, which is round in shape so we call it as round window oval window is covered by foot plate of steps which moves in and out of the cochlea or the endolymphatic fluid setting into it to motion whereas round window is covered by secondary tympanic membrane which prevents the bulging of the endolymphatic fluid back into the middle ear cavity also also there is a plexus of nerves which you can see in the medial wall it's called the tympanic plexus in addition to all this there will be a bulge from the lateral semicircular canal or the horizontal semicircular canal that is also clearly visible and inside one canal the facial canal the facial nerve will be traveling all these are features of the medial wall moving on to the so we finished the lateral wall and the medial wall moving on to the easier roof and floor the roof is formed by a thin plate of bone called as tegment tympani tegment tympani it is related to the temporal lobe of the brain you see brain has got so many lobes out of this this is a frontal lobe in the front occipital lobe behind parietal lobe and above and this is a temporal lobe so this temporal lobe of the brain is related to the roof of the middle ear cavity so any infection of the roof of the middle ear can go into the temporal lobe of the brain it is separated from the temporal lobe by a thin plate of bone called as tegment tympani whereas the floor of the tympanic cavity is related to a part of the petrous bone and a part of a occipital bone it is related to one huge vein which you can see here this huge vein present over here is called sigmoid sinus you can see the vein here okay this vein is called sigmoid sinus it is draining the brain actually it's a big vein therefore we call it a sinus it is s in shape therefore we call it a sigmoid sinus s i g m o i d sigmoid sinus it's a huge vein which drains the brain sigmoid sinus okay so that is the floor floor is mainly related to the vein roof is mainly related to the temporal lobe of the brain moving on to the last uh, two walls that is anterior wall and posterior wall anterior wall consists of three canals we can see that here actually this is anterior wall it is related to one canal which is filled by a muscle called as tensor tympani it is called like that because the muscle is attached to the handle of malleus and the handle of malleus is attached to tympanic membrane 
so what happens if the muzzle contracts the muzzle pulls the handle of malleus forward and that in turn pulls the tympanic membrane inwards stretching the tympanic membrane therefore the name of the muzzle tensor tympani tensor tympani that is there in the anterior wall the tensor tympani and the canal for tensor tympani the next important structure in the anterior wall is a blood vessel which carries the blood to the brain it's called internal carotid artery so this is the internal carotid artery we can see that over in the background i have drawn just now over that so internal carotid artery is related to the anterior wall below the canal of tensor tympani between the two between the canal of tensor tympani and the internal carotid artery we can see one tube which opens to the nasal pharynx which ventilates the middle ear and this tube is called eustachian tube so the anterior wall of the tympanic cavity is related to three canals number 1 the canal is for canal of for muzzle tensor tympani number 2 just below that eustachian tube or the auditory tube it's made up of fibroelastic cartilage in the medial two third lateral one third is bony because it's next to the bone petrous part of temporal bone the lower part one more canal is there which is red in color canal for internal carotid artery which supplies the brain so there are three canals canal for tensor tympani canal for the eustachian tube and the canal for internal carotid artery so that is about the anterior wall last but not the least the posterior wall the posterior wall is related to one mastoid process within that there are air pockets called as mastoid air cells that air pocket and the mastoid antrum is connected to the middle ear through a window called as aditus aditus of the mastoid antrum you can see the window over there aditus of the mastoid antrum okay so the aditus of mastoid antrum is present on the posterior wall it connects the middle ear cavity to another room called as mastoid antrum it's an extra space available on the posterior aspect in addition to that we can see one projection here that is pyramid or pyramidal eminence within which one muzzle will be there that muzzle anchor stape is in place whenever there is a loud sound wave that therefore the name of the muzzle is stapedius so the posterior wall consists of one important structure called as aditus or a window of the mastoid antrum here within the mastoid process also it contains one pyramidal like projection called as pyramidal eminence within which one muzzle emerges out name of the muzzle is stapedius because it anchors the stapes in place whenever there is a long sound wave so to summarize there are six walls in the middle ear cavity the lateral wall is the only membranous which is removed here in this diagram that is made up of tympanic membrane outer cuticular layer middle fibrous layer inner mucous layer cuticular layer is made up of skin stratified squamous epithelium mucous layer is made up of red color membrane lined by simple columnar epithelium with goblet cell middle fibrous layer is connective tissue the medial layer is uh, the medial wall of the middle ear is cochlea mainly lateral semicircular canal canal of the facial nerve the prone tree is a bulge of the cochlea also there are two windows oval window for the foot plate of stape round window for the secondary tympanic membrane that is about medial wall moving on to the anterior wall anterior wall consists of three canals canal for the tensor tympani canal for the eustachian tube which ventilates the middle ear and drains the secretion from middle ear and the canal for the internal carotid artery tensor tympani pulls the malleus inward stretching the tympanic membrane therefore called tensor tympani eustachian tube ventilates the middle ear and drains the secretion of middle ear into the nasopharynx internal carotid artery supplies the blood to the brain that is about anterior wall posterior wall consists of an aditus of one cavity called as mastoid antrum that is behind the middle ear cavity one more air pockets will be there mastoid antral air cells will be there also a pyramidal eminence and within that one muzzle is traveling forward it's called stapedius which anchors the stapes in place prevents the excessive vibration and the tsunami in the middle ear and the inner ear cavity endolymph that is a function of stapedius so that is about the posterior wall the roof is formed by tegment tympani a thin plate of bone which separates the middle ear cavity from the temporal lobe of the brain brain has got so many lobes so one of the lobe of the brain is called the temporal lobe this lower projection this temporal lobe is separated from the middle ear cavity by a thin plate of bone called as tegment tympani that is a roof floor is related to one sinus and that sinus is called sigmoid sinus it's a venous sinus 
So this is called a sigmoid sinus. It is a shape it drains the brain. It is a blood vessel. So all the walls are bony except the lateral wall of the tympanic cavity which is membranous. Thank you for watching and learning.